internet friends, homeownership has always been the cornerstone of the American dream and the foundation of wealth building. Most of us dream of having our own home, some place we can call our own where we can raise our families. No one really dreams of living in a stranger's house for their whole life and paying top dollar to do so. So imagine my surprise when my husband and I were out driving around the other day looking for yard sales and we passed this new development. On the sign, it said, new homes for rent, as in built to rent. New homes built to rent, a whole neighborhood of them, in fact. I'd heard rumors of entire neighborhoods being built and managed by corporate landlords popping up across the United States, but I never imagined it in my neck of the woods here in Metro Atlanta. Have you seen them being built where you are? How much do you think they cost per month to rent? Please pause this video and leave your guess in the comments below. I decided to do a little digging into the company that is building these homes right around the corner from me. And yes, I did reach out to them for comment, but I received none. Well, I received a response from the marketing department, which was this. So this company is called Resi Cap, or the Resi Conglomerate, which is made up of a little Frankenstein amalgamation of an investment sector called Resi Cap. Resi built the building sector and Resi Home, the sales front and property management arm, and Resi Realty. It goes on and on. Anyway, they began in 2010 in Georgia and have since spread all over the Southeast like a venereal disease. Since its inception under the leadership of Andy Capps, the CEO, the business has built more than 2,200 homes and bought more than 5,000 properties across six states. And listen, I'm not directing any hate to Andy over here because he's not the only ball game in town with these built-to-rent companies that are emerging in the face of the tumultuous real estate market. I really couldn't find a lot about him personally. You know, I didn't see any pictures of him with Oprah or Bill Gates or doing the devil horns or shaking hands with Klaus Schwab. Nor do I know the names of the corporate investors who are pouring money into his you'll own nothing and be happy product that the World Economic Forum would probably sell right next to the snack packet of barbecue crickets. I can only imagine who it is, though. How many guesses do we need, really? The investors. I imagine it's some front companies that a company that sounds like a lot like Schmackrock and fan yard is putting her up alongside their blockbusting endeavors. Okay, so did y'all submit your guesses on how much these puppies cost? If you're interested in how much a resi home will cost you, right now it's between $2,800 and $3,200 a month before HOA fees. If you want to put your name on the list to get one of these things, it's $500 right off the rip. The little sad calculator in my brain is going crazy when I see these numbers, like how are people affording this? The average salary in Metro Atlanta is $60,000 a year before taxes, which leaves you about $3,000 a month after taxes, but before retirement and insurance gets taken out. So let's say your wife works too. I, I guess I'll be generous and say that together you have about $6,000 a month and half of it is going to rent. How much are you left with to save towards buying a home after inflated prices at the grocery store, a car payment or two, and if you have young children, I mean, you're both working, so there's going to be daycare costs. And the reviews on these companies, these companies that are building these build-to-rent homes, well, they're not good. They're not good at all. These reviews state that any maintenance or cleaning or even basic communication between the renter and corporate landlord is non-existent. Meaning your brand new build today is tomorrow's ghetto because it looks like corporate landlords are prioritizing profits over tenant well-being. And you know if corporations have their way, that $2,800 to $3,200 a month to rent this joint will double in a few years' time. The American dream isn't for sale, it's for rent in this community near Atlanta, Georgia. While the median sales price for existing homes has dropped nearly 2% from last year, a recent report shows renting as more cost-effective than home ownership in 95% of the U.S. right now. The reason you're here is to rape our town and take as much money and profit as you can away from us. They wouldn't be doing this unless they were out for profits, correct? I, I think most people are in business. Um, in order to, to employ people and turn a profit. Rents will never get lower. Home prices will never get lower in central Ohio unless we increase housing production greatly from where we're at today. Melki calls the region's underbuilding of homes the cause of the housing crisis. Corporations buying out entire neighborhood blocks, outbidding average Americans for single family homes. That's what we've discussed on this channel for years, ever since the COVID drama. 
In the metro Atlanta area specifically, for the last four years, large investment firms have bought up thousands of single-family homes and converted them into strictly rental properties, making homeownership more difficult for your middle-class family. Of course, this trend has been exacerbated by a housing shortage and inflated construction costs that we saw as a result of the pandemic nonsense. But it looks like Wall Street firms are shifting their focus from buying these existing single-family homes to constructing build-to-rent communities, where they own and rent out every property. Reportedly, this strategy now accounts for about 10% of new housing construction. In 2023, there were a record-breaking 27,495 built-to-rent homes completed. And of course, I'm talking about more companies than Resi Home constructing and managing them. The libertarian in me says let them build. If they flood the market with homes, then that addresses the housing shortage. Therefore, supply and demand will do their thing. Housing prices will eventually come down if the demand isn't there, right? I mean, I think people should be able to do what they want with their land, even if that means building houses to rent out. But corporations and management companies are not people. And then I have this other little voice in my head that says, snap out of it. That's not the whole story. That's just the story the media has repeated over and over until the majority of us repeat it too. Obviously, there's one glaring issue. The flood of people coming into our country illegally every day. The immigration policies on housing demand is never mentioned. The Biden administration is literally giving these people housing vouchers. What's the total at now? Millions and millions of people every year coming into the country illegally. The actual number is debated not because of politics. It's simply they don't know and can't keep up with the number. They like to say encounters at the border. We had this many encounters, which total to millions per year. Record numbers. And that's just at the border. That's not considering people flying in on travel visas and staying. That's not accounting for the displaced persons who are going to be conveniently relocated here after all the happenings in the Middle East. So let's think about that for a minute. This is almost a no-brainer for these build-to-rent companies. As more people suck the teat of the government, Section 8 housing, housing vouchers, whatever, it's a guaranteed payday for these corporate landlords to be reimbursed by big daddy government. Which is to say, no amount of endless development is going to address this issue if the border is never secured, if the forever wars have no end. And no grand gestures matter at all if our dollar continues to decline. Our dollar, currently backed by nothing except the confidence to exchange it for goods and services, is controlled by the Federal Reserve, which is not a federal institution, but a foreign banking system with foreign interests and no loyalty to the United States whatsoever. The Federal Reserve printed so many dollars during COVID, so now we are experiencing a period of hyperinflation, the true numbers of which are suppressed. As long as politicians are loyal to the Federal Reserve and not the American people, as long as politicians continue to have lobbying practices in place from these big corporations, ain't nothing going to change. It'll only get worse. You know the whole quote, a society grows great when old men plant trees in whose shade they shall never sit. That's such a wonderful feel-good quote, isn't it? Well, that isn't the current state of the United States leadership at all. The opposite, really. They're chopping them trees down if they can fit another 1,500 square foot cracker box on the lot. And just to make my position clear here, if you couldn't already tell, I find built-to-rent housing, especially in the form of entire neighborhoods, absolutely disgusting. The main reason being that it makes it too expensive for families and individuals to buy homes by artificially raising the market worth and prices of single-family homes. And of course, it's just another way of keeping people renting forever. Rent prices will only go up, renters won't be able to save enough for a down payment on a home, and they'll be stuck renting their, the, for the rest of their lives. As a result, we're already seeing the effects of this. What do I want to call it? The emerging culture, the zeitgeist. There's a whole generation who is looking forward to absolutely nothing. They can't afford the American dream. They think they can't afford to have a family. If they take part in any of it, they'll forever be on the hamster wheel of debt and compound interest, which they will never be able to outrun. And if they follow the program of government schooling, which encourages college enrollment as a pathway to success and is closely associated with the American dream... Most of these folks will be $100,000 in debt before they can ever legally buy beer. Personally, I don't want 
us to live in neo-feudalism or whatever dystopian hellscape this reality is currently curating with catchy little one-liners predicting you'll own nothing and be happy. Do you want that? Is it something we should accept? I don't think so. Let me know, internet friends. You know, I always look forward to your comments. Thank you so much for watching, subscribing, and supporting my channel on Patreon and purchasing my book, Deep State Encyclopedia. Bye.